Hi, I'm Tessa from Love Notions, and I'd like to take a second to introduce you to the Presto tunic, which is the featured pattern at Love Notions this week. I'd like to take a second to tell you why I think it's a pattern that you're not going to want to miss. Let me introduce myself. I'm Tessa, and I am the marketing director at Love Notions. And the big secret is that I really haven't been sewing for very long at all, like maybe two years. And when I saw this pattern, I was a little bit intimidated by it. It has a button placket, it's a woven, there's darts. There's a lot of pieces here that can be a little bit scary to work with, especially for a beginner sewer. So I did not have high expectations when I started this pattern. But let me tell you, I am so excited and very, very pleased with how my first Presto turned out. Um, so let me tell you about the Presto. Okay, so let me give you some details about this pattern. The Presto tunic is a woven pattern that comes in sizes extra small to XXXL. The pattern also has lots of options. So it's a looser fitting woven pattern with some gentle shaping at the bust line. The pattern includes a button placket, which has four buttons, but you could also substitute out snaps or you could even leave the buttons off completely and just wear it with a cami underneath. Um, the Presto also comes with a option to have a sash for a little bit more of some shaping. Um, it also has some dart options. There are darts that are not optional that are in the front, some bust darts, but there's also some bust, some back darts um, that give some shaping into the back that are optional. I did choose to use them on mine and I think it's a good idea to use the darter thing. So as far as sleeves, the Presto tunic comes with a sleeveless version. It comes with a short sleeve, um, a elbow length sleeve, three quarter length sleeves, and long sleeves. So this pattern really can take you through all of the um, seasons of the year. So the neckline has this really pretty inset piece where you could do some fun fabric placement. Um, you could make part of the placket have vertical stripes or some other sort of fabric coordinate um, coordinate with it. Um, you could also do pin tucks and there's a tutorial on the Love Notions blog to do those pin tucks, which would be a really cool addition. Some options for finishing the neckline. You can do, um, it's called a mandarin collar, which is a kind of like a little pop-up collar. Um, or you can just finish the neckline with some straightforward binding, which is what I did. And it was really easy and it is a really nice finish. So what are you gonna to need to make this Presto tunic for yourself? Since it's a woven pattern, it is really helpful to have a serger to finish those wrought edges. However, if you don't have a serger, you could use a French seam technique um, or you could use an overcast stitch on your regular sewing machine. Either option would be perfectly fine. Um, another item that you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of marking utensil to um, mark the button placement. So the pattern comes with a marking guide that looks like this. And it's really helpful to have some kind of invisible or um, erasable pen. And I like to use the friction pen. Another thing that you're gonna need for this pattern is interfacing. It's really important to get the interfacing on the placket collar so everything stays nice and structured um, and all in line. So I use SF101, that's Pelon SF101, and I use that for almost all of my woven pieces. Additionally, I also think it's important to use starch. <laughs> I think it's a great idea to spray, especially your placket pieces and maybe even the um, inset piece of the um, neckline with starch so that things are a little easier to sew 
and they're stay in place a little bit better. So I can almost hear everybody who's looking at this pattern do a little bit of a double take because there are buttons on this pattern. Yes, buttons are hard. At least they can be. For most of us, our machines allow us to have a automatic button placement. And I think that this is a great pattern to use that. I have heard of people actually hand stitching buttonholes, but I kind of can't imagine that. Um, luckily my machine, which is a Baby Love Brilliant, has a fantastic buttonhole feature. And I'm pretty sure that many of the machines out there also have an automatic buttonhole feature. It's a great idea to practice this um, this tool um, and this technique on your own on a scrap piece of interfaced um, extra placket piece before you actually go to put the button holes into your final garment. Um, once you get the hang of your machine, it'll take you no time at all and you won't be so nervous about it. So I'll show you a couple um, of steps that I use to make sure that I get great buttonholes. Another thing that I think is really important to use is some Fray Check. So Fray Check is a um, product by Dritz and you just spread a tiny bit of it out onto your buttonholes before you've cut them. And then um, it just makes it so that the buttonholes won't fray and they'll wear a little bit better and a little bit longer. Another thing that's super important to use is that interfacing. So I have an example piece for you right here. So the interfacing on the back of the placket is absolutely imperative. It's gonna help prevent any slipping or sliding around while the buttonhole machine is doing its thing. So like I said, you're gonna to wanna to use your friction pen to mark those buttonholes. You're gonna need your guide. You're gonna to wanna to have some fray check. And then this is my secret weapon. This is called a Fiskars craft tool and our craft knife. And it is a, you can exchange the blades out of here so that it can become a hem, um, a uh, seam ripper as well. But this is the buttonhole chisel. And this is so wonderful after you have done your buttonholes to go back in and you just go, and it cuts those buttonholes so cleanly and it's like the most satisfying thing in the world. So I highly recommend getting a Fiskars um, craft knife um, and I think you can get them on Amazon. So on the no Love Notions blog, there is a buttonhole post for the Lyric blouse and um, dress that is really, really helpful. Um, but I thought I'd just take a second to show you that it really can be easy to do buttonholes on your own. So this is my buttonhole foot. If you're using your machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to take out your buttonhole foot for the Baby Block Brilliant. This is um, the foot A. So on this particular foot, you're gonna actually take the button that you're planning to use on your piece and you're gonna fit it into this holder. And this holder corresponds with the machine to tell the machine how long the button hole needs to be. So you don't have to do any guessing or um, figuring out what that size should be and inputting that yourself. It'll do that for you automatically. So um, I'm gonna show you how I do a really easy button hole on my machine. So here is my buttonhole and I'm just going to spread a little bit of fray check across the top of this. Let that soak in for a second and dry. And then I am going to use my handy buttonhole chisel on a cutting mat of course. And I'm just going to press into the hole. And I probably will put a little bit more fray check on there as well. I hope that you don't let your fear of buttonholes dissuade you from trying out this pattern. It's a really great feeling after you finish a pattern like this that's more on the intermediate level and you have such a professional finished product. 
Um, next I'll show you some of my make and um, I am so happy with how it turned out. So here is the in real life version of my Presto tunic turned dress. Um, you can see my button placket. You can see my bound neckline. So I used a um, package of ready-made double fold bias tape. I think that it was a half inch um, double, it was very thin um, double fold bias tape. And I'm really happy with how finished it looks. The Mandarin collar, I think I'll definitely do for my next one, but I wanted to do something a little bit quick and easy. So I have the waist tie on and that was a super simple, easy little thing to make up. I did cut this on the bias. So I love the length that I added. Um, I added, like I said, eight inches of length to the, um, at the length and shorten line, which I think was maybe like right around here. And I just dropped that down eight inches and it didn't mess with any of the bust darts, but it did mess with the back dart. So I did have to remark those onto the pattern pieces and my fabric. Um, there is a very, um, there's such a cute little split hem detail right there. And on the original pattern piece, if I had kept it exact, that front piece would have been quite a bit different in length. But I, because I'm doing a dress version, I wanted the um, difference to not be quite so exaggerated. So I only turned up this hem just maybe like half an inch. Um, I surged it and then turned it up to stitch it. And then in the back, I actually turned up the back probably two full inches. Okay, so like I said before, I did make a large size on the top and then an extra large for the bottom. And I'm really happy with the, the fit of it. I feel like it's um, pretty loose. I think the pattern is intended to be a little bit looser. And I feel that I maybe even could have sized down one more on the top. It's a little bit more loose here, but I love that looser feeling for summer. So I think that makes sense for me. Um, so all I did to blend those sizes together was at the dart, just, just under the dart. I kept the pattern piece at the size large and then slowly and gradually made my line come out to the extra large on the um, lower pattern. So as far as fabric for me, I used a Rayon Chalet, which has a really beautiful drape. Um, some Rayon Chalets can be a little bit more slippery, but this is a Rayon Chalet from Raspberry Creek, and I felt like it was pretty substantial and um, pretty easy to sew. It wasn't slippery or hard really to sew at all. I didn't really have trouble with it. Other fabrics that you could use for a pattern like this are linen, uh, chambray. I've seen a lot of really pretty presto tunics, especially in chambray. It would be a beautiful piece for summer. Um, uh, you can even make it out of flannel for the winter. So if you were going to do a tunic length, you could do some really cool like flannel, a flannel that's in a plaid and do some fun piecing for this inset piece and use maybe the three quarters. So as far as styling, you can do a lot of different things with a pattern like this, but I was going for kind of a little bit more of a summery look and I am by no means a fashion kind of person, but I decided to put my hair up so that we could clearly see the placket. I am wearing some hoops and a bracelet, kind of minimal with my accessories. And then I'm wearing some summery espadrille kind of sandals. So I am loving this summery presto look. And if you haven't noticed this pattern before, I think you should take a look at it.